The wine industry has been here for a very long time. The biggest risk to that industry is the fact that the temperature is increasing. No, I think what scares me a lot is the rapid changes that we see from weather conditions. People don't understand the damage it could cause. We can see that it's getting hotter, the rainfall is getting less over the long term. Water is a very scarce resource in the African continent. The one thing that scares me most is going into the vineyards and seeing the impact of the drought. It forces wine farmers to be much more environmental conscious. The things that we are trying, uh, nobody has done before. <laughs> you know? We will be focusing a lot more on specific areas. People planting a lot of cover crops. We try and cover our soils completely. We will definitely have to gear up for climate change to be profitable and sustainable over the long term. And making sure that the type of wine that we are making will still be there in 10 to 15 years. Then we can, we can win climate change, definitely. With its breathtaking views of the surrounding mountains, the Cape Winelands is home to a 55 billion rand industry that employs nearly 270,000 South Africans. Wine is big business and closely linked to South Africa's tourism industry. The reality, however, is that the Winelands has not been spared from the severe consequences of climate change. The wine industry has been here for a very long time and is pretty much used to the conditions that we have here which are very dry summers and wet winters and the growing season for the grapes is generally from about September till March, April and they depend on irrigation, they also depend on heat units so they like the, the hot dry summers. The biggest risk to that industry or to that summer is the fact that the temperature is increasing and the number of very hot days is increasing. As a viticulturalist, Christian Lewitz believes wine production is particularly vulnerable to the effects of climate change, from the tangible health of vines to the taste and quality of the finished bottling he co-creates. We used to get uh, between 500 and 600 millimeters of rain, and the last 10 years the rainfall has been significantly less. I think in the last six years we've just, just reached over 400 millimeters per year. We find that some of the subsoils are still dry in, in winter and it takes much longer to get to a saturation point. The grape cultivars that we planted here, everything facing north, we had to start change the type of cultivars, uh, move more towards red. The whites we keep on southern facing slopes and uh, the rootstock, we had to go to more drought resistant rootstock, so Paulson or Richter 99, that type of thing. Grapes are sensitive crops and vineyards need a delicate balance of the right climatic conditions to produce quality wine. Even the smallest of changes in temperature, moisture and soils can affect a whole year's harvest. The end of 2013, we had a lot of rain. So Vartikloff was situated quite high up and it was almost like a river coming down the road. So with that, the 2014 harvest, we had quite high yields. And then as the years progressed in 2017, of course, everyone will remember, we had a drought. So when you have a drought, you have very low yield. So in the winery, we had to make sure, especially on the reds, that we work extremely gently to not have too harsh tannins because the lower the yield, the thicker the skins of the grapes and you can easily make a wine that's quite tannic. With the contrary, in 2014, where we had higher yields and we made very elegant wines that we could release quite quickly and that was just very accessible. So that I would say has the biggest impact, the yields on the quality. Waterkloof Wines isn't the only wine estate that is forced to adapt to climate change. From overly ripe grapes to destroyed harvests, vineyards all over South Africa are experiencing disruption and the consequences are truly frightening. If we compare the two dry years or the two drought years in 2018 and 19 to the 10 year average, then we will see in 2018 we were 14% uh, down the average. 
in 2019, 11% down, in 2020, 4% down, and luckily in 2021, we were 4% above the 10-year average. The areas that were most affected by the drought was up in the Northern Cape, the Swartland, which is a dryland area, so the guys don't have irrigation in the vineyards up there, and also in the Olifant River. It's also in those areas that people started removing a lot of the older vineyards. So in 2020, total for the industry, they removed about 1,000 hectares of vineyards. That could be that they are using that agricultural land for other crops, or uh, they just decided uh, to diversify into other business models. All indications are that the western half of South Africa will become increasingly dry. Climate change therefore poses serious risks to the country's world-renowned wine industry, which will need to move into higher altitude regions and ultimately move away from cold climate wines. What we're seeing is changing conditions in the places where grapes have been farmed and wine has been made for, for a very long time. We are seeing the wine regions shift. We're seeing them move into cooler areas. We're seeing the input costs in the traditional areas increase where farmers are really not making that much of a profit on cheap wines. They have to make very expensive wines or get very high prices for their wines in order to be profitable. I doubt though that the whole wine industry will be shifted from the existing areas because it's got a lot of ancillary industries associated with it like wedding venues and restaurants and, and, and guest houses and things. So it's the whole package, if you like, that has to be considered. But the impact of climate change on the nature of the grapes being grown and the kinds of wine will be very important. Some wines do very well under hot conditions, some don't. So we're going to see a movement towards the richer, bolder reds, for example, and the whites that can withstand the impacts of climate change. An increased temperature generally means increased sugar. Increased sugar means increased alcohol. A lot of fine tuning that has to be done in the wine industry. Viticulturally, there are a lot of new clones coming out or varietals that can combat drought conditions. In the winery, we just work a lot gently uh, with the grapes. If we have got very low yields, we leave it on the skins for longer, for the tannins to soften out, or we leave it in barrel for longer. So that's what we can do directly in the winery. Climate change doesn't mean the end of wine. It will require some changes, but there are a number of different options for increasing the resilience of the wine industry. Options that wine body Vinpro have already begun exploring. So the first thing that I'm seeing producers doing at this stage is paying a really a big amount of focus and attention to site selection. We do have a decision support system that you can log on to and it will indicate which is the cooler slopes on that specific property. Or we have, if you have more than one property, we should be able to go and have a look which of the two properties would be the best to plant that specific variety. So then we are also looking into rootstocks. Um, so we're specifically looking at rootstocks that's more drought tolerant or drought resistant. So the two rootstocks that we are using a lot is Richter 99 and Richter 110. Then if we go into varietals, we are really spoiled. We have more than 200 different varieties in the country that we can choose from. Then if we have a look at different clones, we have more than 370 clones that we can choose from. So in terms of making a selection on site, rootstock, clone and cultivar, we do have a lot of uh, um, options available for the growers. Besides creating new varieties, wine farmers have an increased focus on plant coverage and soil management in the vineyard. Cultivating plants to cover the soil around the vines removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, therefore counteracting the greenhouse effect. It also enhances soil quality by bettering the retention of water in the soil. We've been uh, organic for a, a couple of years, of close to 16 years. We've been biodynamic for about eight years. In the beginning, it really helped us with building carbon in our soils, which then again uh, holds more water. But the last uh, couple of years of the drought, the problem that we found was with organics and biodynamics is you really have to do a lot of cultivation in your, in your soils, you have to plough underneath your vines, you have to disturb the soil quite a bit to keep the competition down. And now we're starting to move more to uh, regenerative 
type of agriculture where we try and cover our soils completely, even underneath the vine. We do a lot of compost teas and composting, building the carbon that way also. Then if you cover your soils a lot and you build up the, the metabolism of the soil through compost teas and micro, microbial solutions, then you start getting a bigger metabolism, which um, solubilizes the nutrients a little bit better because now you don't, you've got less rain, so a lot of your nutrients are locked up in rock and clay. But if you've got a high metabolism from microbes, then those nutrients become more available that way uh, to the vines. People are looking at ways of increasing their soil moisture, looking after their soils, and this is a, this is the core function of smart agri: is to show farmers or encourage farmers to do that. And there's a whole branch of agriculture called regenerative agriculture, where, where farmers are looking at working with the soil and trying to build up the soil, reducing the chemical dependency on the soil. And I think that's a very good move because it just makes them more vulnerable to the kinds of changes and the variability that climate offers in any case. Something that I think uh, makes South African really unique as well is soil preparation. So we do soil preparation up to 1.2 meters deep and the reason for that is that we really want to build up a big buffer zone in the subsoil to capture that winter rainfall and then if we go into the drier period through the growing season the plant can actually extract the water from that deeper soil layers. Apart from its smart agri plan, the South African wine industry has also invested in other mechanisms to manage climate change. This includes smart agri tools like the TerraClim platform, giving winemakers access to detailed climate and terrain information that helps them navigate the increased seasonal changes. I think there's a solid base of new knowledge that comes out of this project. All of that knowledge feeds into a system and into a database where a lot of these layers, climate layers, terrain layers, soil types, all of those uh, data points, and you must know that there are so many data points across the, the wine, if you look at a specific wine vineyard or a specific production area, two farmers could be next to each other, but there could be so much differences because of their specific soil, because of the, the history, the slope, the elevation, all of those things feed into your decision making at the end of the day. And I think what TerraClim is doing is, is putting that into one place. It's providing you with a one-stop shop where you can connect all of the dots and make informed decisions of where to plant what. It is important for the wine industry to understand and read data because we would like to find uh, improved solutions to combat climate change. Future skills that we would need to address is data reading and analysis. I also think that we need to incorporate some um, automated and AI type of curriculum content at university and tertiary level, especially in our agricultural programs. All of these intricacies and other factors work in conjunction with temperature to dictate what vines can successfully grow where and for how long. And all are increasingly unpredictable or totally appended in the face of climate change. It forces wine farmers to be much more environmental conscious. I think uh, you're going to see really good wines coming out. The guys that um, really focus on their soils and their winemaking techniques are going to be creating superior products. And wine is one of those things which you don't just go out and buy a bottle of wine. You buy the wine that really you like. I think the, the market has been flooded with cheap wines and with climate change and the impact of that, that has and the amount of focus and attention to detail that has to come into farm uh, vineyards, you're gonna sit with better wines in the market. The smaller guys maybe will fall out or the guys that are making inferior products. We want to make sure that consumers still enjoy a bottle and a glass of wine at the same quality, but with less inputs so that we also look after the environment. I think consumers are now sensitive about their purchasing choices and they want to see that you are also looking at the environment when you produce a quality product. More than ever before, the people who grow, make and sell wine are tuned into the many nuances of the climate change debate. And, as wine commentator Tim James once remarked, the devil is in the detail, and the devil already allows the industry glimpses of the flick of his forked tail. 
I think the Western Cape will definitely be focusing more on specific areas, areas where they get better rainfall to plant varietals that are adapted to that area. And we're already seeing it. The Yimmel and Arda, for example, they have a lot of Chardonnay, Pinot Noir because they've got cooler conditions in the winter. And in our area, we will definitely have to look at planting varietals that are a little bit more um, heat resistant as well, because it is getting quite hot, and then also drought resistant. So we will be focusing a lot more on specific areas. I think that would be the future. People are always going to want to go to Stellenbosch or Pal because they're really, really traditional wine areas. And even though those places might not be making wine at a profit, the whole atmosphere, the whole um, area there with all the old buildings and the picnic spots and the, you know, the added value makes, makes, I think, will make them sustainable and we'll see them for a long time to come. I think winemakers who still believe this is a hoax, they should really think deep and hard about how they see their business being viable within the next 20, 30 years. We've seen the impact of the drought. We've seen the impact of specific um, disasters that happened in other areas. If you just think about other industries uh, or the wine industry in international industries, how quickly one storm could take away your whole vineyard. Now, I'm not saying you have control over these things. I'm saying you need to understand how you diversify and how do you make sure that you diversify your business so that you can um, mitigate your, your risks. Looking into the future, I do believe that we will see a, a use of more varietals in the Cape Winelands. So there are really interesting varieties like Grenache Noir, Grenache Blanc, Verdello, Vionier. And uh, we can probably start using that within our winemaking toolkit as well. So I know if we speak about uh, to the marketers, they will always, always say, well, the consumer like buying the normal big five varieties. So it's a more difficult sell selling these uh, strange names but maybe we should uh, then explain the consumer what is Verdello all about or what is uh, Grenache Noir all about. Or on the other side, we can also use that as a blending component in the wine to make that wine uh, more efficient and effective at a price point level as well. So I definitely think we'll, that we will see uh, a use of more varietals in the future in the Cape Winelands.